for the brightest half hour in television. The dependable Dodge Plymouth dealer in your neighborhood. The man to see for that elegant new 54 Dodge presents Danny Thomas. And Gene Hagen as his wife. And Sherry Jackson and Rusty Hamer as their children. That gives us the game in rubber. <laughs> Helen, I don't mean to be inquisitive, but why did you have to trump my ace? Oh, I'm sorry, but I've ruined our game. My mind just wasn't on bridge. Every time I played a card, I saw my new Valentine gift from Henry. Oh, it certainly is beautiful. Uh, you don't know how beautiful. I had it appraised. <laughs> well, mine was a memorable Valentine's Day, too. Oswald finally unloaded those swamps in Florida. Oh, well, those swamps look lovely. <laughs> well, I happen to have the sentimental type husband. Oh, they're murder. <laughs> I got a card for Valentine's Day with just three simple words. I love you. Oh, oh there ought to be a law. <laughs> what do you mean there ought to be a law? I think that's sweet. Well, I thought so, too. Especially when I saw the diamond and ruby watch attached to it. Oh! oh pretty. Well, that really drives the sentiment home, doesn't it? Oh, yes. Now, Margaret, it's your turn. What did your ever-loving force you to accept as a token of his undying love and affection? Hmm? Your Valentine's <laughs> Yes, your well, Valentine's gift. What did you get for Valentine's Day? Oh, uh, well, it... Oh, well, it's right over here on the piano. Oh, oh let's take oh, a look. What's yeah. Oh, a satchel full of money. Uh, <laughs> no, it's silly. There. Well, what in the world is that? What is it? It's a tape recorder. Oh, well, I think it's a lovely gift. You know, I've got so much tape around my house. <laughs> Scotch tape, adhesive tape, friction tape. It would be nice to have a place to keep a record of it. <laughs> no, Adam, this is a very useful gift. All you have to do is, is turn this switch, and it records every sound in the room. It's very handy when Danny wants to record a new song or try out a new routine. Very handy. Saves him a lot of time. He gave this to you? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What's he going to give you next Valentine's Day? A suit with two pair of pants? <laughs> Very funny. Danny doesn't have to give me gifts to show his affection. What's more important are, well, are his little kindnesses and his, his consideration <laughs> and his thoughtfulness. Well, you can have your consideration and your thoughtfulness. I'll take a punch in the nose from dear fur-bearing Oswald. Oh, you have a lot of fun pretending you're grasping females, don't you? Well, at least we grasp the right males. Uh, you make marriage sound like some kind of a financial arrangement. Well, it isn't. When did they change that? <laughs> One thing about Danny, he's, he's never let the romance go out of our marriage. The little kindnesses, the, the kiss when you least expect it. Oh, those wonderful evenings before the fireplace filled with warmth and poetry. That's my Danny. Why, the half hour I've been looking all over the house. I'm going crazy. I put an orchestration down. Leave it where it is, will you? Why do you keep moving things? Oh, hello, girls. Honey, it, uh, it, it must be in the bedroom on the bureau. Honey, it must be in the bedroom on the bureau. Does that make me a moron in front of your friends? I looked in there. How's Oswald, by the way? Oh. Want to get rid of those swamps you tried to palm off on me? Uh, yes, and he gave me this mink stole for Valentine's Day. Yeah, well, if you're trapped it in a swamp, don't be so sure it's mink, kid. <laughs> Stay out of the rain, that's all I say. <laughs> I give up. Where is it? Sweetheart, it must be in the bedroom where I told you it was. What are you gritting your teeth for? <laughs> well got a perfect right to get upset. After all, I do mislay his things sometimes, but then he's always twice as sweet to me afterwards. I'll never forget the last time. In front of the fireplace, he read me poetry for an hour. It's the making up that's so lovely. <laughs> You're all right. What's on the bureau? Oh, now, now, you see, dear? Yeah, next time, don't put a pile of newspapers on it. <laughs> I'll be late for dinner tonight, so uh, 
Keep the hash warm. <laughs> now that's what I call poetry. <laughs> I speak your name in my every prayer. Why don't you try it in E flat? Danny, don't you think this song has a little too much treacle? <laughs> oh, that's British for schmaltz. <laughs> Be that as it may, my friend, Margaret loves this song. And if my wife likes the song, it's automatically in the show, because I want to do it for her. Here's my baby doll now. The lady I worship and adore. Your enslaved husband bids you hello. What's the matter? What's the matter? In front of my friends, I, I get a slap on the arm. And in front of nobody, I get a kiss. In behalf of myself and my fellow nobodies, I wish to say thanks. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, Benny, I didn't mean you. It's just that, well, in front of my friends, he's Mr. Hyde. And when we're alone, he's Dr. Jekyll. And if I don't get a little more Dr. Jekyll, I'm going to take it out of his hide. Mr. <laughs> What's up, Doc? She's sore because I didn't make a big fuss over in front of the Wednesday Bridge Club. You know that I love her, I worship her. I have to say it in Macy's window? I have the same problem with my wife in front of company. She always kisses me and runs her fingers through my hair. <laughs> she runs her fingers through your hair? She's a dreamer. <laughs> you know why women like to be fussed over in public? So when company leaves, the wife can turn to the husband and say, why don't you treat me like that? She breaks his ribs. How come you don't talk to me that way? <laughs> women want all the happiness in the world just so they can make their other women friends unhappy. I'm glad I'm not a woman. So am I. <laughs> just think, we might have been married to each other. <laughs> think what our children want to look like. <laughs> Please, I've got a weak stomach. Could you imagine a baby all nose and no hair? Fortunately for posterity, you married Margaret instead. Fortunately for me, I married Margaret, you mean. Uh, by the way, what are you getting her for her birthday? Oh, there I gotta do a little outfoxing. You know, she's been hinting about a mink coat. Well, the taxes the way they are, even a mink can't afford a mink coat. <laughs> so I, uh, I got to do a little scheming, you know. I was gonna get her a bottle of perfume. But you kept talking mink, I figured I'd better up the ante a little bit. So I'm gonna get her a nice ring. She'll be happy. This way, I outfox my wife. You're lucky. Patty won't accept the ring from me anymore. Why not? When I gave her her engagement ring, she stepped on a diamond and had seven years bad luck. <laughs> Who's that? Uh? Well, how long have us been standing there? Oh, ever since you told Uncle Benny how you outfoxed Mother. You heard that, huh? We're gonna talk it over and let you know how much it'll cost you. <laughs> no, I don't think it'll cost you anything. But I just learned we'll pay off when I get married. How do you like that? Eleven years old already, she knows how to make her husband unhappy. <laughs> All right, go on, run in the kitchen and get something to eat your kids. Hey! Hey! Large kid in the middle. <laughs> Play this thing back here, sit down. Hear what it sounds like. What do you think we're rehearsing for? Fine, I want to hear my piano playing sounds, too. Yes, I hope my voice doesn't get away of your artistry, Mr. Cavallero. <laughs> I'll be late for dinner tonight. Keep the hash warm. Now that's what I call poetry. Somebody must have had this recorder on during the bridge party. Jeez, I'm glad you shut it off. We wouldn't have to listen to any female secrets, would we? <laughs> yeah. Who wants to hear what women got to say when they're alone? <laughs> yep. He's just pretending to be difficult for your benefit. He's really very easy to handle when there's something I want. Well, you've got a birthday coming up. If you play your cards right, you may be able to get another tape recorder. <laughs> <laughs> what about <laughs> Don't worry. If I want to, I can get it. Danny's probably planning on getting me another bottle of perfume. So I'll just take him down to Inseagull's and show him that mink coat I like. <laughs> he'll be so frightened, he'll offer to settle for the ring I wanted in the first place. <laughs> Boy, 
boy, did you outfox her. <laughs> hey, your lips tell me no, no. But there's yes, yes in your eyes. I've been missing all your kissing just because I wasn't wise. I'll stop my scheming and my dreaming for I realize hey, your lips tell me no, 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 no. But there's yes, yes in your eyes. Oh, your lovely lips. Oh, how this song brings back memories. What memories it does bring. You see, it was her song. Katie's song. My Katie. Katie, the kleptomaniac. <laughs> she couldn't help herself. Poor kid, she'd steal anything that wasn't nailed to the floor. But I loved her. Never forget the night we met. It was raining. She came in. <laughs> With the rain glistening in her hair. She was without a doubt the ugliest dame I ever saw in my life. <laughs> Didn't have a tooth in her head. Not a tooth. <laughs> but the most beautiful set of gums I ever saw in a world. <laughs> She came rushing into my arms. The electricity could be felt everywhere. She backed me into a wet socket. <laughs> we were inseparable. So somebody pulled a switch. <laughs> As she stepped back, she was smiling at me. Smiling with my teeth. <laughs> It was a clap, all right. <laughs> no, but don't blame her. Don't blame Katie. After all, she stole just to get even. She, too, had been robbed. The minute I saw her, I knew it was missing. I was sure it was missing. And so I said to her, Your lips tell me no, no. But there's no nose on your face. <laughs> Nature cut out what should jut out. You should sue. You've got a case. And as time passes, you'll need glasses with no nose. What will you do? But don't you care, dear? We can share, dear. Cause I've got enough for two with some left over. <laughs> Yes, I've got enough for I get it. Thank you. It's very lovely, but why did I go out and have to get perfume today? Kid, it's for my wife's birthday. This little bottle of perfume is what you're giving Margaret for her birthday? Correct. Whoo, boy, what a sport. <laughs> Are you sure you can afford it? <laughs> you stick to the publicity. Let me run my own life, hey, kid? This is a birthday present for my wife. What's so cheap about it? Oh, nothing, nothing. But I can just see the headlines tomorrow. Jack Benny move over. Make room for daddy. <laughs> Gee, what a sport. Say, I better go out and pick up a couple of handkerchiefs for Margaret's birthday. I want her to have something to wipe away the tears when she sees the perfume instead of the ring. Tears or no, this is what she gets for her birthday. Hi, sweetheart. What are you doing out in this kind of weather? Well, when I saw the rain, I got worried about you, so I brought down your raincoat and your rubbers and your umbrella. You mean to tell me you got yourself soaked to the skin just to bring this stuff to me? Well, you're my husband, aren't you? Oh, oh, I love that song, Benny. 
Well, I've got to run, honey. I'll have some coffee for you when you get home, and I'll throw a couple of logs on the fire. <laughs> Wait a day or two. You may want to throw him on it. <laughs> oh, Benny, don't be silly. Why? I get why you're being nice to me. Tomorrow's your birthday. Do you honestly believe that? Oh, now hold the phone. Oh, now hold the phone. <laughs> I've been married to him long enough to know that that means he loves me. And when he says to me in front of my friends, uh, keep the hash warm, that means he loves me too. <laughs> you know the nicest birthday present you could give me? A great, big, brand new, shiny, I love you. Said right out loud in front of witnesses. And I'd wrap it up and, and keep it. And it, it'd never get old or rusty or tarnished. That's what I'd like for my birthday. Well. Sure, he puts his rubbers on, Benny. You monster? <laughs> for two weeks. That's right. Besides all expenses paid, you get double your pay. If you make $100 a week, you get $400. It's all yours, too. Win! Two weeks vacation for two to any spot in the USA with all expenses paid. Win! $500 extra cash. Besides your pay doubled for two weeks, plus all travel, hotel, and resort expenses paid, you get $500 for your very own to save or spend as you please. Win! The complete use of a 1954 Dodge Royal V8 for the entire two weeks you're away. To drive as you please, wherever you may be. Yours for a new thrilling adventure in elegance on the open road. Dodge for 1954, celebrating 40 great years of dependability. 40 great years of growth and progress. Yes, it's Dodge's 40th anniversary All-America Contest. A total of 40 winners. A winner a day for 40 days to signal each of the 40 years in the great history of Dodge. And $10,000 additional cash prizes as well. You can win. Here's all you do. Go right now to your nearest Dodge Plymouth dealer. He'll explain the simple contest details and give you this entry blank that's easy to fill out. Yes, sir. Two weeks away with double pay anywhere in the USA. See your nearby Dodge Plymouth dealer now for all details. Win the great Dodge 40th Anniversary All-America Contest. Go to a thousand times when you wash your hair, stay out of that drafty kitchen. She didn't get it from a drafty kitchen. She caught cold carrying those things to you in the rain. Now, Terry. We told her not to go, but she's stubborn. She is not. I just didn't want Daddy to catch cold. Oh. Well, don't blame me. I didn't ask her to come out in the rain. Now, all of you, stop making such a fuss. I'm all right. Somehow, I wish you'd have caught that cold in that drafty kitchen. Now? Now. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Ladies first, honey. To wrap this yourself, sweetheart. Oh, it looks lovely. Here, now, let's see. Oh, isn't that wonderful? What is it? <laughs> it's going to be a scarf. Oh. Your birthday came up faster than I could knit. Oh, thanks, sweetheart. And now you're dressy. Well, this is exciting. Oh, a painting. I did it in school. Well, isn't that lovely? A haystack with two pitchforks sticking out. No, that's a picture of you and your bare feet. <laughs> uh, I guess I must have had it upside down. Well, thank you both. Well, that takes care of our presents. <laughs> Oh, ha happy birthday, dear. Where's the present? Oh, the, the present. Well, uh, 
Yeah. That hasn't arrived yet. It's coming real soon, though. What's that in your pocket? <laughs> oh, oh, they, oh, this is nothing. It's just a little present I got for Agnes, the scrub woman. It's her birthday, too. Hers is next month. Yeah, well, uh, I really got it for her for Father's Day. <laughs> See, her husband just became a father. Or did her father just become a husband? <laughs> Anyhow, uh, well, this is not it, anyhow. And I I'm late. I'll see you later, honey. Daddy, why didn't you give Mommy the ring? Because it's not a ring, Terry. It's a little bottle of perfume. You didn't even get her the ring. You said you would. No, I just wanted to teach her a lesson. You don't appreciate Mother. You forget the time that she brought us all up to Boston so you wouldn't have to have Thanksgiving dinner alone. And you forget a lot of other nice things she's done for you, too. Don't forget she gave you me. <laughs> That's no selling point, kid. And you forget, she caught that cold carrying those things to you in the rain. She wouldn't have caught cold if she had a mink coat. <laughs> Isn't it funny you should mention a mink coat? You just let the cat out of the bag, because that's what she's getting. A mink coat. It's going to be a surprise. I just bought this little bottle of perfume so I could put it in the pocket of the mink coat. Wish I could think that fast. <laughs> Oh, thank you, sweetheart. Is there anything else I can do for you? Mm. No, I am just fine. Well, how old are you today, Mommy? What? That's no question to ask a woman. We never tell our age. <laughs> I'm not ashamed of mine. I'm six and a half. Well, if I were six and a half, I wouldn't be ashamed of it either. <laughs> I'll bet you aren't a day over 50. <laughs> well, thank you, Lucy. Well, of course I remember. Danny called me up and reminded me. Me too. Me too. Oh, wait, am I take off your things? Oh, thanks. Boy, is he the sly one, trying to promote presents wherever he can. My birthday keeps to himself. <laughs> Danny called you up, huh? Yes, yeah. I guess he didn't want you to be alone on your birthday. Oh. Well, can I open these now? Oh, these can wait. Where is the ring? Yes. The ring? Yeah. Oh, uh... Well, I didn't get it yet. <laughs> <laughs> Would you get that, honey? Excuse me a minute. Oh, sure, go ahead. Oh. A package for you. Oh, well. To Margaret with love. Danny. Oh, oh, that's the ring. Oh, oh, <laughs> What's this? Some present. A spool of scotch tape. Well, well then there's another card. Play this on the tape recorder. Oh, you know, a friend of mine got a present like that from her husband, and when she played it, the first words she heard were, Darling, when you hear this, I'll be in Buenos Aires with my secretary. <laughs> well, here goes, for better or for worse. Happy birthday, darling. If the girls are listening, you're not going to get the ring. I'm getting you a mink coat instead. But since it can't be delivered until next week, I, I thought I'd give you the other present you asked for today. The one that won't grow old or get rusty or tarnish. In front of the entire Wednesday afternoon bridge club, I wish to say that I love you very much. You may note that the box this tape came in was closed by the seal of a notary public. I have sworn that I want no greater good fortune in my life than to spend the rest of it as your grumbling, complaining, but deeply gr grateful husband. I uh, want you to note that I've had these sentiments put on tape so that any time I forget, you have my permission to play it back at full volume. There's a very schmaltzy song that seems to go with this moment, so at the risk of being stoned, here it is. You'll never know just how much I love you. Oh, don't, 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 don't. Yeah, 
Johnny, why don't you let him hear the song? Well, sweetheart, you said you wanted witnesses. You'll never know just how much I love you. You'll never know just how much I care. And if I try, I still couldn't hide my love for you. You ought to know, for haven't I told you so? A million or more. Go away, dear, my heart stays with you. I speak your name in my every prayer. And if there is some other way to prove that I love you, I swear, I don't know how, you never know if you don't know. that nice. Looks like the end of a mushy movie. <laughs> and now, a word from our alternate sponsor, Lucky Strike. Do -da, do -da, do -da. Lucky tastes better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky tastes better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. For Lucky Strike means my tobacco richer tasting. Smoking enjoyment is all a matter of taste, and Lucky's taste better. You can see why when you strip the paper from a Lucky by tearing it down the seam. First, Lucky Strike is made better, round and firm and fully packed to smoke freely and evenly. Second, Luckies are made of long strands of fine, light, naturally mild tobacco. Everybody knows LSMFT, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So remember, smoking enjoyment is all a matter of taste. And... Lucky tastes better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky Strike, Lucky Strike. Uh-uh, the mountain. The beach. The mountain. The beach. The mountain. What's the difference, darling? Whoever wins the great Dodge Vacation Contest can go anywhere he wants in the USA. Just be sure to enter right now. Win two weeks away with double pay. Yeah, and speaking of winning, we'd like to say thank you to our sponsors for their faith in our show and to the American press and public for their acceptance of it, making possible the winning of these two prized awards. The Sylvania Award. And the Academy of Television Arts and Sciences Emmy. We'll be back again next week for Lucky Strike. Now for your Dodge Plymouth dealer. Good night. Dodge Plymouth dealer in your neighborhood.